President Biden gave a speech last night and essentially killed our hopes of having larger social security payments, at least for now. Let's discuss the details in this video. As most of you know, President Biden plans to approve two more stimulus packages this year, the infrastructure plan and the American family plan. Well, last night, Biden gave a speech addressing what he plans to focus on for this stimulus, and he essentially killed our hopes of having bigger payments until at least next year. So not completely dead, but we're not going to be getting these payments anytime soon, at least according to President Biden. So let's see what he had to say, just the highlights, and we'll discuss exactly how this affects Social Security and what we expect to happen next. Madam Speaker, Madam Vice President, No president has ever said those words from this podium. No president has ever said those words. And it's about time. For too long, we've failed to use the most important word when it comes to meeting the climate crisis. Jobs. 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 For me, when I think climate change, I think jobs. American Jobs Plan will put engineers and construction workers to work building more energy-efficient buildings and homes, electrical workers, IBEW members installing 500,000 charging stations along our highways so we can own, so we can own the electric car market. Farmers. Farmers planting cover crops so they can reduce the carbon dioxide in the air and get paid for doing it. Look, think about it. There is simply no reason why the blades for wind turbines can't be built in Pittsburgh instead of Beijing. Okay, right now Biden is addressing the infrastructure plan, focusing on creating jobs and rebuilding infrastructure. But later in his speech, he will focus on the American Family Plan, which is what we were hoping would include Social Security benefits. No reason. American Jobs Plan is a blue-collar blueprint to build America. That's what it is. And it recognizes something I've always said in this chamber and the other. Good guys and women on Wall Street, but Wall Street didn't build this country. The middle class built the country, and unions built the middle class. This essentially highlights the theme of Biden's administration. He wants to tax the wealthy and create less taxes and more jobs for the middle class and lower class. So that's why I'm calling on Congress. to pass Protect the Right to Organize Act, the PRO Act, and send it to my desk so we can support the right to unionize. And by the way, while you're thinking about sending things to my desk, <laughs> let's raise the minimum wage to $15. I would say parenthetically, if we were sitting down, we set a bipartisan committee together and said, okay, we're going to decide what we do in terms of government providing for free education. I wonder whether we'd think, as we did in the 20th century, that 12 years is enough in the 21st century. I doubt it. 12 years is no longer enough today to compete with the rest of the world in the 21st century. Biden is referring to free education, the way high school is relatively cheap or free. He wants to extend this to add two more years of free community college in order to provide better education and help raise the lower and middle class to making more money over their lifetime. That's why my American Families Plan guarantees four additional years of public education for every person in America, starting as early as we can. Jill is a community college professor who teaches today as first lady. She's long said, she's long, she's 
If I've heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times. Joe, any country that out-educates us is going to out-compete us. She'll be deeply involved in leading this effort. Thank you, Joe. The American Families Plan will finally provide up to 12 weeks of paid leave and medical leave, family medical leave. This is something that most countries require. Now, although most jobs in the U.S. do provide some form of matern maternity leave, they're not required to. It's not federal law that they're required to do so. Now, I know lately most companies do, but this would make it an absolute requirement, although it would not include males as far as, I'm, as far as I can tell, because other countries do require males to get paternity leave as well. Of course, this would just be a step in the right direction. One of the few industrial countries in the world No one should have to choose between a job and a paycheck or taking care of themselves and their loved ones or parent or spouse or child. We all know how outrageously expensive drugs are in America. In fact, we pay the highest prescription drug prices of anywhere in the world, right here in America. Nearly three times. Camera shifts to Bernie Sanders. We all know Bernie has been one of the strongest fighters to lower drug prices, lower health care costs, expand Medicare, even for all, but at least to 60 or 55 years old, which would greatly help those who are trying to retire a little bit early. But the good news is Biden is trying to include some of this in his next package. He does want to try and lower the Medicare age to 60 and lower drug prices as well. And this would help our community because those of you who watch my videos, the majority of you are either retired or close to retirement and face a lot of health care costs. So the good news here is that we do expect to have some form of health care reform, which will help the majority of you who watch my videos. For the same drug, nearly three times what other countries pay. We have to change that, and we can. Let's do what we talked about for all the years I was down here in this, in this body, in Congress. Let's give Medicare the power to save hundreds of billions of dollars by negotiating lower drug prescription prices. My fellow Americans, trickle down. Trickle down economics has never worked. And it's time to grow the economy from the bottom and the middle out. Just saying it, bottom line, trickle up, trickle down economics did not work. This is something Republicans tried in the late 90s, early 2000s. It's been a complete disaster for the middle class and especially the lower class. And that honestly just underscores Biden's entire administration. Biden's administration is focusing on trickle up economics, creating more funding and tax breaks for the lower and middle class and more taxes on the wealthy. You know, and our own vaccine supply as it grows. Okay, so let's address Social Security benefits. We're about halfway through the highlights of President Biden's speech, and he still has not mentioned Social Security benefits. Well, guys, I'm not even going to make you get through the entire thing. You can stick around and watch the whole thing if you'd like. But I'm going to tell you, he did not even mention Social Security benefits, despite the fact that it is still on his website. As I've shown you on my channel multiple times, it still says on President Biden's website, as it said throughout his campaign, that we need to increase Social Security benefits, we need to increase monthly payments, provide a $200 per month stimulus boost until the pandemic is over, increasing that COLA adjustment, which is done annually, increasing benefits for widows, for those who are elderly who have been on benefits the longest, and just increasing benefits across the board by taxing the wealthy and creating more funding for Social Security. Still on his website to this day, and about 100 days into office, he still has not addressed Social Security benefits. Now, a couple of weeks ago, Bernie Sanders with other Democrats wrote a letter directly to, Bernie, to Biden saying, Biden, we need you to keep your word. We're holding you to your word and we need you to reform Social Security benefits. And they specifically asked for him to increase SSI payments, which is supplemental security income, to at least the poverty line, because currently it is well below the poverty line for those who are on SSI. Now, Biden still has not publicly addressed that. Now, that's not to say that behind closed doors, President Biden and Bernie Sanders had a conversation, discuss what their plan is going to be moving forward. Maybe they want to do these first two stimulus packages and then address Social Security benefits. But 
We cannot wait. If they're passing all of this stimulus and all of this spending, why are they not including Social Security benefits reform? And I talk about it a lot on my channel. President Biden promised this on the campaign trail. Seniors and those who are disabled are one of the biggest reasons why President Biden won this election. And now he's been completely silent on the topic. So guys, let me know in the comments if you agree. We need President Biden to come out and support seniors and support those who are disabled the way they supported him throughout his campaign. The good news is this is just the beginning of negotiations. This is President Biden's starting point. But Democrats will push for more and of course Republicans will push for less. Democrats like Bernie Sanders might fight to include Social Security benefits reform, fight for larger SSI payments, larger SSDI payments. But as of now, President Biden has essentially killed our hopes of having larger Social Security payments this year because he has not even addressed it. In his speech last night, he did not even address Social Security benefits, and it looks like he is not going to be pushing for this. So we're going to need Bernie Sanders and other Democrats to push for this in order to get it done. But as far as President Biden is, con is concerned, the hopes of having larger Social Security benefits this year He's essentially killing those hopes and at best saying we're going to have to wait until next year. So that's kind of the point of this video and kind of why in my mind he has killed Social Security benefits this year. Not for good, but as of this year, things are not looking good. Again, we could still have Democrats like Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Chuck Schumer push for Social Security. But as of today, on April 29th, the door is slightly more closed on Social Security benefit payments being increased unless we have some Democrats come out and fight for it. So there's a good chance we might have to wait until next year, but we'll have to wait and see. But guys, that's my take on it. That's kind of what I took from President Biden's speech. A lot of good things included, a lot of tax breaks for the lower class, a lot of monthly payments for those who have families, a lot of rebuilding infrastructure and rebuilding and creating middle class blue collar jobs, but simply not enough for those who are retired. Not enough for our seniors who have paid taxes their entire lives. Ending child poverty, of course, is very, very important. But ending poverty for the elderly is important as well, especially when our elderly have paid taxes for 40, 50, 60, 70 years, paid into the system for decades. They deserve the help more than anyone else. And of course, those who are disabled do as well. But guys, let me know in the comments if you agree. And guys, don't forget to subscribe. I will keep you updated because we do expect to have updates on Social Security throughout President Biden's administration as he has promised to increase payments. So at some point, we do expect him to address this. So don't forget to subscribe. I will keep you posted. And guys, if you made it this far into my video, thank you so much for supporting my channel. If you'd like to stick around, we're going to watch the rest of the highlights of President Biden's speech where he details what else he wants to include in these next two stimulus packages. But if you don't stick around, guys, have a great day. Thanks for watching. But if you do stay, thanks for sticking with me. Let's watch the rest of the highlights of Biden's speech regarding what he plans to include in these next two stimulus packages. For vaccines for other countries, just as America is an arsenal for democracy for the world and a consequence influence the world. And we won't ignore what our intelligence agency have determined to be the most lethal terrorist threat to the homeland today. White supremacy is terrorism. We're not going to ignore that either. Look, I also want to thank the United States Senate for voting 94 to 1 to pass the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act to protect Asian American and Pacific Islanders. You acted decisively. You can see on television the viciousness of the hate crimes we've seen over the past year, this past year and for too long. I urge the House to do the same and send that legislation to my desk, which I will gladly, anxiously sign. I also hope Congress will get to my desk the Equality Act to protect LGBTQ Americans. For all transgender Americans watching at home, especially young people, you're so brave. I want you to know your president has your back. Another thing, let's authorize the Violence Against Women Act, which has been law for 27 years. Twenty-seven years ago, I wrote it. 
It will close the act that has to be authorized now. It will close the boyfriend loophole to keep guns out of the hands of abusers. The court order said this is an abuser. You can't own a gun. It's to close that loophole that existed. You know, it's estimated that 50 women are shot and killed by an intimate partner every month in America. 50 a month. Let's pass it and save some lives. America's adversaries, the autocrats of the world, are betting we can't. And I promise you, they're betting we can't. They believe we're too full of anger and division and rage. They look at the images of the mob that assaulted the Capitol as proof that the sun is setting on American democracy. But they're wrong. You know it, I know it. But we have to prove them wrong. We have to prove democracy still works, that our government still works, and we can deliver for our people. Folks, as I told every world leader I've ever met with over the years, it's never, ever, ever been a good bet to bet against America, and it still isn't. We're the United States of America. There is not a single thing, nothing, nothing beyond our capacity. We can do whatever we set our minds to if we do it together. So let's begin to get together. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops.